So you want to use an HX711, such as one of these here, but the 10 or 80 samples per second doesn't suit your needs, and like me, would rather someone told you what you can do about it, rather than going through a datasheet. So I'm going to explain what you can do, it's a couple of things, and also a few things that I've learned about these along the way. First is to connect pin 14, known as XI, on the datasheet, to PWM. Now this is normally supplied grounded. That means that the uh, chip will use its onboard oscillator of 11 megahertz. So we need to break this ground connection and connect this via a capacitor to the PWM of the microcontroller. Now the value of that capacitor needs to be 20 picofarads and the minimum maximum frequency that this PWM can be is minimum of 1 and maximum of 20 megahertz. The range of sample rates which you can expect to get if this rate pin here is at 0 connected to ground is between 0 0.9 and 18 samples per second. If instead this rate pin is at 1 or connected to VCC, you can expect to get between 7 and 145 samples per second approximately. Second is to use a crystal oscillator and pins 13 and 14. Now pin 13 is known as XO and is normally supplied not connected. The crystal oscillator connects across these two pins and then also to ground and looks something like this. So this is the middle connection, goes to ground. Now all of this inside the dotted line here is inside the crystal oscillator and it normally looks something like this in shape and it normally has the three connections on the underside so we have a ground in the middle and then the two outer ones and these go to these pins it doesn't matter which way around it goes and a bonus tip you can connect this rate pin to the digital output of a microcontroller if you want to change between two different sample rates using code. I created this code for measuring the sample rate. I will try leaving it in the description where you could just uh, copy it from and paste it into the Arduino IDE and that should work I think. Um, this code also puts out a PWM signal which is this bit here to pin 3 and also puts a high or low onto pin 8 as well. You can obviously you could change that to another pin, um, pin 8 if you wanted to. So I'm not actually going to use the PWM on this next demonstration. I've got a HX711 with a crystal oscillator from an Arduino on it. So that's 16 megahertz going into the XI and XO pins. And this is with the rate set to zero. We're getting a first value is time, so 68, 70 milliseconds between the samples. And so that's around 14 and a half samples per second. And the last value is the uh, actual reading um, from the ADC. So if I put a one in, um, it should step up into the faster sampling rate. Now this is displaying every 10 samples, it's um, writing to the serial port, um, and so now you can see we've got between 8 and 10 milliseconds and a sampling rate of uh, just over 116 samples per second. And a couple of examples with PWM. This is around 1 megahertz, so you see we're getting about 0.96 samples per second and for up the rate we should be getting is around about 7.7 .7, around about 130 milliseconds between samples and finally this is with the maximum PWM possible from a 
typical UNO or NANO, which is 8 megahertz. And so we're getting around 7 samples per second with a rate of 0. And for the 1, we're getting around about 58, 17, 18 milliseconds between samples. And finally, an additional note for anyone using the exact board that I've shown in this video, because there is actually a missing ground connection on that type of board. Now, this pin 5 here is known as analog ground. And it turns out it's not connected in any way to this ground here. Now that ground there, which is on the set of four pins that's on the side of the board, goes to these two, and also has a capacitor connected to VCC. And these data lines are connected, obviously, to there and to there. I discovered this problem when I was changing the rate. Uh, there was a step up and down uh, the output. So I was changing the rate using a microcontroller. So this was disconnected. And I was also using PWM here as well. So I thought with those two disconnected, or well, perhaps I've gone and disconnected a connection which is under the board that goes like that for example to one of these pins um, but when I looked underneath the chip itself and tested the connection across there with a the meter there is no connection at all um, so with this and then connected to that ground via a jump wire I found the problem had gone away there was no longer any step up and down in the output when I changed this rate so I would strongly advise you to connect this analog ground to that ground there. Then this brought up a rather interesting question. Well, how does this chip actually get its power then? Because this ground here is only connected to VCC by the capacitor. It's not connected to the chip. None of these other pins here are ground pins. So I can only assume, going by the data sheet, that because the clock line needs to be held low all the time, except for when you want the chip to go to sleep, in which case you pull it high for a very short period of time, I can only assume that this chip here is actually powered by the uh, clock line and VCC, which I thought was rather interesting. So that's it for this video. I hope someone can find this helpful and thank you for watching.